this is just going to be a chatty get ready with me video. I'm trying out a new foundation today, the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. I have this in shade 0 0.5, which I think is the lightest shade. I picked this up a few days ago, so I've used it about three, four times maybe. Um, and I can't tell if I like it or not. I'm still in that testing phase of figuring out how much to use and how best to apply it. So far, I think less is more. So I'm going to use about a half a pump and I'm just going to put it on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to grab it with a brush. This is a skin perfecting brush from EcoTools. Glasses off, always a good idea. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of the foundation and I'm going to work it onto the face one area at a time. This is one of those foundations that really dries down and sets fairly quickly, so you don't have a lot of play time to get it blended in. That's the lesson I've learned using this over the last few days. That if I kind of apply it to the whole face, you know, dab it on with my fingers or whatever and try to blend it all in at once, I end up with areas that go kind of patchy because they've dried. And then once it dries, it doesn't really want to move. So going in small areas with a brush. So Urban Decay describes this foundation as having a demi-matte finish, which I do think is a pretty accurate description. Coverage is light to medium, I'd say, and it wears pretty well throughout the day. I have fairly oily skin, so the fact that it dries to a bit of a powdery finish is good for me. Anybody with um, a drier skin type, I would say you may want to proceed with caution because it does cling a little bit to dry patches. Not a lot, but enough that I can, I can see it when I get right up close to my mirror. It's not something you notice just at normal conversation distance, but it is something to note if you have a drier skin type. It may not work as well. With these type of foundations that kind of dry down to a slightly powdery finish, I like to kind of leave it to kind of warm up and, and set on my skin. Uh, sometimes they start out looking a little bit powdery or a little bit dry and I'm not happy with the finish and then by the time I'm done the rest of my makeup and it's warmed up on my skin, it looks a lot better. So I'm just going to continue on with the rest of my makeup and give that, give that a chance to settle in. Uh, concealer underneath the eyes, I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me concealer, which has been a long time favorite because it's got pretty decent coverage and it's nice and hydrating. And again, less is more. Just using a tiny bit and then really blending it out with my finger. Making sure to get into that inner pocket there where I have a lot of darkness. and onto these outer corners where it's sometimes a little bit red. Now I am going to set underneath my eyes with a little bit of the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. And this is a Real Techniques setting brush. I like this powder for underneath the eyes. It works so well. Really sets the concealer and it does have a bit of a, a brightening effect, but it's not too powdery and dry. So I'm gonna prime my eyes with some eyeshadow primer. This is the Photo Focus eyeshadow primer from Wet n Wild. 
really good budget eye primer if you're looking for one. It's kind of similar to the Urban Decay Primer Potion, but I actually like it better. It's a little smoother, and I like the packaging better. shadow just wears so beautifully over top of this primer. The Urban Decay one I find can get a little bit kind of dry and sometimes goes on a bit patchy and I find it sometimes affects the texture of my eyeshadow. They just don't go on as smoothly but this. All right while that's setting I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows. Give them a bit of a comb through. And then I'm going to use some of the NYX uh, Tinted Brow Mascara, and I have this in shade 3 Brunette. I should probably just clip my hair out of the way so that it's not driving everybody crazy. And I like to take this mainly through the front part of my brows where I overplucked them as a teenager grab each and every little hair that's there and just try to make the most of what I've got so that I don't have to fill that area in too much with with pencil which looks really artificial and then once there's less on the brush then I kinda go and comb out through the rest of the brow Sort of trying to comb upwards and shape them a little bit as I go. This is NYX Micro Brow in Taupe. I usually use the Ash Brown shade in this pencil because the taupe has a little bit of warmth to it that kind of looks a bit off on me, but I had my hair colored last week and I had some kind of warm coppery highlights put through it, so I'm finding that I can get away with the taupe pencil now. I was using one of those brow trimmer deals the other day and I actually took a chunk out of the top of my brow right there. The trimmer comes with an attachment to kind of like a guard thing to stop you from doing that. But I thought, oh no, I'll freehand it. I don't need that. I think I'll use this today. This is uh, was a birthday gift from my sister. It's the Natasha Denona Eyeshadow Palette 5, palette number 12. I think I might just take some of this middle shade, which is called Sienna. And it's a metallic finish. It's a warm coppery shade with a green uh, duochrome pearl running through it. It's kind of like Mac Club but it's not as dark and it's a lot uh, shinier. The finish is a lot more intense. And I'm just gonna blend this onto my lid with my fingers. I usually like to apply shimmer shadows with my fingers. I just find they go on a little smoother, but these shadows in particular work so well with fingers. And I think it's just because they're so emollient, like they've got things like uh, jojoba oil and other plant oils in them that just make them so 
so creamy and the warmth of my finger just really helps melt them into the skin. So the finish is just so smooth. Real Techniques uh, base shadow brush. Just blending the upper edge so there's no lines. Blendy, blendy, blend. And then if I want to add a little bit more smokiness to that crease, I think I'm just going to take, where is it? I'm just going to take another less intense eyeshadow. This is uh, Woodwinked from MAC on that same brush, and I'm just going to buff that through the socket and slightly above. just to kind of smoke it out a little bit more. And I think I'll take a little bit of the woodwinked underneath. Just really, really messy. some eyeliner. I want this look to be kind of soft and grungy. So I think I'm going to use this Elizabeth Arden Smoky Eyes pencil in Espresso. I'm just going to kind of scribble that all the way along the upper lash line, getting as close into the roots as I can. And then on this little smudger brush from EcoTools. I'm just gonna lightly buff over that to really smudge it and smoke it out. Same thing on the other eye. As if I'm gonna do something different on the other eye. I like this pencil because it, it uh, it's so soft and smudgy and you can just layer and blend, layer and blend, layer and blend until it's as intense as you want it. Just kind of dotting it along the lower lash line and then really smudging. Eh, what the heck, let's take that on the waterline too. This pencil doesn't wear that great on the waterline, but I like the effect. All right, um, now that I've got that liner on the bottom, I feel like I need a little more little more intensity on the top, so I'm just going to go back over it, smudge it out a little more, take it up a little bit higher. That's 
better. Uh, Super Sizer mascara from CoverGirl. I like the wand on this. It's more of a comb type of wand that you can really get into the roots of the lashes with and concentrates product at the roots and then sort of comb it out. It takes a bit of patience but you can build quite a bit of volume with this mascara without it going all clumpy. hate when I do that. Now I got a smudge I gotta clean up. Alright, now how do we feel about these eyes? Do they need a little more intensity? I think so. Often when I get my liner and mascara on, I find that I can go back and add a little more depth to the screen. Add a little more depth to the crease. Bring that shadow up a little higher. So this is just the uh, Woodwinked from MAC. Uh, I might just take a little bit of um, brulee also from MAC. Just sweep that under the brow, just to kind of soften my edges. I might just take a little bit more of the woodwinked underneath. There we go. Nice and grungy, just the way I like it. I think I'll do blush next. I think I'm going to use this shade from Urban Decay. It's one of their afterglow blushes in the shade Fetish on a, I don't know, it's an Eco Tools brush. The name's rubbed off. I think it's a round powder brush. Not sure how much this is going to show up. I'm pretty light handed with my blush. I'm not walking around with clown cheeks all day just for the sake of getting this to show up on camera. Champagne Pop from Becca on an angled highlighter brush from Real Techniques. Again, being pretty light handed because this product is fairly intense, or you can build it up to be quite intense. Tiny bit under the brow. A little on the bridge of the nose. Cupid's bow. And I like to take my finger afterwards and just kind of tap over it so the product melts into the skin. Now I'm going to do some spot concealing before I powder, I think. If I can find my concealer. I 
for a Mercier Secret Camouflage in SC2. And as you can see, I really only use the kind of yellowy side, the peachy pink side, just looks weird. And I'm just gonna cover up some of these spots that have come to join the party. Oh, this is a Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage brush. And I'm just kind of feathering that onto any blemishes, scars, random pigmentation spots. So I like to put that Laura Mercier concealer on first and then go over it with a bit of powder foundation. This is almost powder foundation from Clinique, which I've used for years. And just on the same brush, that secret camouflage brush, I'm just going to pat some of this powder foundation over the spots that I've concealed, which does two things for me. One, it sets the concealer so that it lasts longer. And it also boosts the coverage a little bit because it's a powder foundation, so. Locks in that concealer and helps hide those blemishes even more. I'll also take this just in areas like around my nose where I have broken capillaries. I sometimes find that just going over that area with a powder foundation afterwards works better than trying to use more foundation or liquid concealer. More liquid products around the nose just seem to go cakey on me. Uh, I'm just gonna set my foundation and knock back a bit of shine with some powder. I think I'll use, this is um, the Coverall Pressed Powder from Wet n Wild in the shade Fair on a, I don't know, Eco Tools, I think it's a mineral powder brush. I've had it for years, I can't remember. It was part of a set. Just focusing that mainly on the T-zone. I love this powder, by the way. It's like four bucks. And it, but it performs like a much more expensive powder. It's very finely milled. It's very smoothing. Kind of does a good job of filling in pores and texture. It just looks really nice. Right, on to lips. I forgot to put lip balm on. I usually do that at the start. And I think I'm gonna use this new lipstick that I got the other day. It's the one of the Revlon, what are they called? Ultra HD gel lip colors. This is the shade Vineyard. I really like these. They have quite a bit of color to them, but it's a really nice lightweight lipstick. I can wear it all day and it doesn't dry out my lips. And they wear really nicely too. They kind of dry down and leave a nice stain as they wear off. I'm just going to take a little bit of lip liner. This is Annabelle Big Show Gel Lip Liner in the shade Meat Rosy. And I'm just going to fill out my Cupid's bow. Take it into the inner. 
inner corners. stupid hair clip. Wow, the camera's really picking up those highlights that I had done, at least on the viewfinder. Let's see what this looks like when I actually get it on the computer. But that's basically me done. So thanks for hanging out with me today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.